educator. All right, and hello everyone and welcome. I'm Jennifer Britton, the CEO of Potentials Realized, and I'm excited to be here today with Kathy Vaughn, our team lead for team coaching here at Potentials Realized. And we're sitting down today to have a conversation about coaching supervision. So Kathy, so great to connect with you today. What's, uh, what's top of mind as you think about our call? Well, Jennifer, this is such an exciting call to have because we started this conversation in January where I was very clear to you that supervision was super important, how much I had invested in getting trained, participating in supervision, finding my voice in it, and now really excited to really be bringing it to Potentials Realized as an offer. And I see real value to all of us coaches, giving us time and space to really reflect on our practice, but we'll talk more about that as we go forward. Fantastic. And I have to say, Kathy, I'm excited that, you know, we've been able to find a way to really fuse this and bring this as an offering to our work, to our clients, to prospective coaches. As some of you may be aware, coaching supervision is becoming an increasingly important component. And for those of you that are team coaches, uh, this will be something that you'll definitely want to listen to very carefully, given the new credential that's evolving with ICF which probably, and it's not 100% confirmed, but most likely will have a formal requirement around coaching supervision. So both Kathy and I will be offering that uh, as trained supervisors. We've done advanced training in the team coaching supervision a few weeks ago with Peter Hawkins. And I have to say, Kathy, I'm really excited. How about you? I'm super excited. And Jennifer, let's not forget that supervision is beyond ICF. It's also EMCC. And Association of Coaching. So global practice, global and, business. And for, you know, I think that's an important piece because supervision as it relates to coaching has evolved across the globe in very different timelines. So those of you who are in our network, uh, in Europe, in the UK are probably saying, but of course, coaching supervision, because it has been a requirement for EMCC for quite some time here in North America and across the Americas, we're just really starting to embrace it. It's still early days. And so regardless of whether you're familiar with this or not, just welcome. I'm really looking forward to our 20, sort of 20, 25 minutes together. So Kathy, anything else you wanna say before we get started with our formal conversation? No, I say, I, I say let's jump right in. Let's jump right in. So we're really doing this to provide a little bit more information. You know, here at Potentials Realize, we're all about helping coaches do their best work particularly in the group and the team coaching space. And some of you may know that I've informally done supervision for many, many, many years, especially in the group and team coaching space. As our profession has continued to evolve, I'm continuing to upskill as well, doing some formal advanced uh, supervision training right now. And I think what I'm excited about is the fact that, you know, the models and the practices are continuing to emerge. So here at Potentials Realized, we are now offering both individual coaching supervision for coaches, as well as group supervision. And we really want to stress that we are offering supervision for coaches who work one-on-one, -on -one, also for group coaches who are working with groups. And we are also offering specialized support for team coaches who are looking at team coaching supervision. So just like coaching, supervision is also layered. And we really see it as something that is essential to create that pause point, as you've probably heard me talk so much about, the pause to reflect and really look at what's happening in your work. So with that, Kathy, you know, what do you think is important about this? And, and like metaphorically, why is this, you know, really important to look at right now? Uh, thanks, Jennifer. So I have this question here on the slide is what's your metaphor for mentor coaching and supervision? We haven't defined what those are yet, but I want you to imagine being on an escalator and going from the ground floor to the second floor to the third floor, which is a lot like mentor coaching. It's got steps. It has potential stages or accreditation if you want to link it to that. And you keep on going up. And Kathy has frozen. So I know Kathy's saying as you keep going up, 
then you further develop your skills. I'm going to assume that's what you were about to say, Kathy. So with mentor coaching, as well as supervision, we want to look at some of the nuance. So some of the nuance that's really important to be exploring is the fact that mentor coaching is really grounded in skill development. And with skill development, we're looking at those minimum skill requirements. Mentor coaching, uh, especially if you have participated in your credential, your renewal, it's all about really mastering those skills. And it's looking at how do we move forward? So I'm sure Kathy will be back. As many of you know, Kathy's calling in from Kenya. So uh, some days her, her network is, is stronger than others. Um, supervision is a separate modality, right? So how supervision and what supervision, I'm not sure where Kathy was going with her metaphor, but um, you know, with supervision, we're taking that meta view, we're creating a pause, regardless if we've been coaching for a few months or many decades. And it is that opportunity to really be looking at uh, what's working, what is the value add for not only you as a coach, but also for you and your client together. So Kathy, I wasn't extending your metaphor, but I was, I was sharing a little bit about the mentor coaching and really the focus on skills and the minimum skill requirements. So I'm gonna let you continue with your metaphor. Oh, so my metaphor about the uh, kaleidoscope is that supervision is as if you've created that kaleidoscope, if you've ever built one or you've used one, and you are turning the dial to see what is it that you see. And every once in a while, the supervisor, who's a professionally trained supervisor, comes in and might say, why don't you turn it a little bit this way? And if you shook it, what might it look like? So both equally valuable, right? Having rules, having steps, going up, going down in a very structured way, though that still can be fun. I mean, I've danced, danced up elevators, haven't you, Jennifer? Absolutely. It can be fun, but it's going up and going down in a very you know, straight line, very linear in many ways. Mm -hmm. Supervision is much more expansive and there's many different places you can go. Still the same elements, but it's how do those elements interrelate and where are you paying attention to? So we just thought we'd bring that in here just to kind of set the stage before we look in more depth at mentor coaching and supervision and what's the difference. And I really appreciate those two metaphors, right? The elevator and then the kaleidoscope and can't say enough about, you know, supervision as a methodology really um, like we see in so many other professions is that opportunity to see the varying perspectives, to step back, to pause, to slow down. And it really is that slowing down in order to speed up. If we are not taking these pause points, we can fall, we can lapse. I really think there's a lapse ability, um, not just from a skills perspective, but from a grounding perspective as a coach, because with our clients, right? It's not just about the coach, it's with our clients. We are holding such a wide expanse. And so this is where that relationship with a supervisor can be so valuable in terms of unpacking, uh, you know, complex issues. And I say this from my own experience as a team coach, you know, my supervisor yep. is amazing in terms of helping me really look at options and possibilities and things that I might not even be aware of because I'm so in the moment. But as we slow down together, can really see what, what, might, be, what might be possible. And Jennifer, well, let me just also add another perspective here. This, you know, we've talked a lot about um, training and skills and it's, it's a really a buzzword. Uh, everyone's doing training, right? I need to get more training. I need to get more training. Training assumes you don't know. I mean, that, that's just the definition of training. An expert is training you. Supervision is about you, you know, you're sitting there with someone else who's a professionally trained supervisor, reflecting on your skills, really looking at development. So it's an, so supervision is an investment in your ongoing development as a coach. It's not, you might learn additional skills. You might hone some skills, but you're really looking at how do you show up as a coach? in all aspects of your practice. And it's that in that sense, it's, and it's because it's regular, it's very different than attending a five week or even a year long program. 
So if you've been doing a lot of training and haven't given yourself a chance to sit and reflect, maybe now that this is the opportunity and the time. Love that. And Kathy, I think, you know, you're pointing us to some of the, you know, beyond the nuance. So, so mentor coaching versus supervision. And again, ICF versus EMCC uh, have different requirements for coaches at this stage. Mentor coaching typically from an ICF perspective needs to take place over a three month period, 10 hours of which at current moment, you know, 2022, seven of those hours can be done in a small group format. Supervision though, right? Uh, maybe, again, this is looking at the new uh, team coaching credential, which is gonna be announced mm -hmm. later this year. Certainly for those of us in the pilot, it's been a requirement to do 10 hours of supervision with a trained supervisor, uh, you know, a registered supervisor. And there are requirements. So like mentor coaching, right? You want to do your due diligence and make sure that that mentor coach, as well as that supervisor is meeting the requirements for the credential. Because there's a lot of people who offer supervision, but it may not be in the way uh, or aligned with ICF, EMCC. And I know, Kathy, you're you're very involved in other um, professional associations. So um, supervision, what would you say about what you see as some of the distinction in terms of how people meet and what, what the timelines look like? Well, with, as you mentioned about mentor coaching, first of all, you have a body that you have to go through, right? And you have a, a minimum time, time period that you have to do it in. You can't do it faster than three months. In supervision, it's very different. It's much more habitual. Um, it, I think best practice is uh, every month if you're actively coaching, if you're not actively coaching as much, probably every 20 hours of coaching. Now I'm gonna say if you're a team coach, whether you're working as an individual team coach or as a co-coach, supervision should be part of your plan from the beginning so that you have the space as an individual and with your co-coach even to sit in supervision and work through how are you showing up for your client. And you and I have had this conversation, Jennifer, as we've looked to build assignments for our clients, uh -huh. that supervision is part of our proposal. It's our commitment to ourselves as professional uh, team coaches, but also to our clients and the services that we're offering them. So, we won't give a taster today of mentor coaching versus supervision, but we do invite you to set up a call with Kathy or I to talk about this further. And we anticipate that this is going to be the first of probably several calls that we'll do here at, uh, you know, in the summer, the summer, we're stepping into summer 2022. But this is, you know, certainly something that we hope will capture your attention. From a potentials realized standpoint, again, our best place to find out what's on the go, as I shared, we're going to offer individual supervision for people who want to sit down one on one or co coaches coming together to work with one supervisor. Some of you, because you're really in that group, that peer learning environment, may prefer to sit down in a small group. And like we're known for, right, our supervision groups are small, they're not 50 people on the line, they are usually six or less. And we're bringing real time cases to that supervision conversation where we can really learn from and learn with each other. So I do want to really invite you check out and, and turn to groupcoachingessentials.ca as different offerings come on board. You'll see those offerings show up as you always do on the left hand side of the page, as well as upcoming program starts on the right hand side of the page. Anything else you want to say on just, you know, what we have in the pipeline for development, Kathy? Well, of course, we will. We, we, we're offering our full complement of other services. But just to talk a little bit more about supervision, why we're so excited about the fact that you and I both are doing this is because of our focus on teams and groups, coaching more than one. And we really believe, especially for the team coaching space, this is essential commitment and investment to anyone who wants to be fit for purpose. Um, there's a lot of emphasis on team coaching this year, and this is gonna make a distinguishing factor for you at, in your business. For us as professionals, we wanna ensure that all the team coaches are getting the most amount of support they can. So we'll be really looking at how to maximize that. And since we do everything virtually, 
you'll be experiencing a lot of interesting things. We'll be drawing from different uh, practices, different approaches, not a singular model, but we look and we ensure that it will be systemic, just like the kaleidoscope. Yeah. And back to that image. And thank you, Kathy. I think, you know, again, if we look at what's happened in our profession, and I really think about the marker of summer 2020, uh, so, summer 2013, when I released from one to many best practices for group and team coaching, and to think about how things have evolved, certainly from a team coaching lens, supervision is really becoming structured and anchored from a group coaching perspective for group coaches. It's not quite as um, systematized yet, but I would invite you to really think about how this can add value. I have to say personally, I've had coaches reaching out to me since just after the publication of From One to Many, almost 10 years ago, asking Jennifer, are you offering supervision for group coaches? And so we've been doing this a long time in a more informal way. Now it's becoming a lot more formalized. And as you, as you know, from our work and certainly from my work, um, I'm all about providing that landscape of the range of what's happening. There are so many great models evolving. And I think at, just like anything, as a group coach, as a team coach, we wanna have that variety of approaches, a variety of the discipline in hand, and that will be part of the supervisory experience as well. All right, so how about we move on? And uh, again, let's take a look. Mentor coaching quickly. Do you wanna just run through the definitions here, Kathy? Yeah, so this comes directly from uh, ICF, and it's really that mentor coaching is a relationship that focuses on achieving competence within an established competency framework. It usually leads towards professional accreditation. And, and in this case, we're talking specific, specifically about ICF, that you, you go through it as you're going through your application process. So it's very tied, it's a reflective process around the competencies and the behaviors, and the indicators within those competencies, but it's tied to an application. It is not usually a regular refresher that one takes. And so that's a very big distinction. So, and, you're, and in that particular um, process, you are working with somebody else, either individually or within a group to achieve the markers of that competence. And you focus on them. Maybe you do uh, competencies one and four on a particular week, then you move on to another. It may or may not be based on your coach knowledge assessment and where you need the most support. It might be generic or you go through all of the competencies. So that's a very big difference. And mentor coaching also assumes that the mentor coach is more knowledgeable than you. Now I'll add in here, Kathy, you know, we've been offering mentor coaching since 2010 and I threw the mentor coaching groups. And what I continue to hear from my mentor coaches is they love the fact that mentor coaching is an opportunity to sharpen skills. So we're not saying one is better than the other. They're in fact, fill, fulfill different needs and requirements. And I think mm -hmm. it's very easy for um, experienced coaches actually to get a little sloppy sometimes with what coaching truly is. So I just wanna plant that seed. And as Kathy said, usually people come to it when they're in that renewal phase, one thing to be aware of, though, is if you are a PCC, you can apply 10 hours of mentor coaching towards your core competencies towards a renewal cycle. So one, one change I am seeing actually in our industry as well, probably within this last two to four years, has been more and more PCCs returning to do mentor coaching um, because they want they feel that they've really sort of started deviating from the core competencies. Maybe they're doing a bit more facilitation or consulting. And so again, mentor coaching, strong focus on skill, skill development. And we'll continue to be offering both one-on-one -on -one mentor coaching for people who wanna do it individually, or our preference really is the mentor coaching group experience because you not only learn from your mentor coach and Kathy's a mentor coach here at Potentials Realized, Yvonne is a mentor coach here at Potentials Realized along with me, but we also really see that power of being in a small group, learning group of mentor coaching with others who maybe bring different coaching methodologies, modalities, and approaches. Again, it's a great opportunity to learn. All right, so shall we move on to supervision maybe, Kathy? How about we, we continue on? 
And so take us away. Where, the, where do these definitions come from? Well, I, I drew here on two different definitions, one from ICF and EMCC. And if you're looking at them, it's professional support for ongoing continual development of the coach and the effectiveness of their practice, right? It's reflective dialogue that benefits the coach and the clients. And in Kate, the and if we think about the team coaching practice where you, you and I, Jennifer, have expertise, it is the system, right? It's way beyond. So an opportunity to really sit and reflect, look around, take a pause, think about that last session, and then decide what is it that I need to do so that I can be the best coach. And the question I really love is what's, what is it that the coach, sorry, what is it that the client needs us to discuss in supervision? And I find that particular question to be extremely valuable for as a coach, for, for me to really connect with what is it that I'm doing to serve my clients? How about for you, Jennifer? Well, I, I, I agree with you fully, Kathy. I think it is team, and again, see, I'm framing this less around one-on-one -on -one supervision, but to the team coaching supervision, it is that um, very much about the relationship and actually even in one-on-one, -on -one, it's all about the relational space that we're creating with our clients. Um, and looking, you know, in the supervisory relationship on really what's possible. So helping the coach notice, um, you know, what are they bringing? What is the client bringing? And of course, that sort of third entity, um, what is the relationship in the coaching experience asking for? And I think that's a really important piece. So where I find, you know, again, if we bring it back to different coaching methodologies, I think people who have gone through training in ORSC will be very familiar with the third mm -hmm. entity notion. People who have done work with Peter Hawkins and systemic coaching will <laughs> be familiar with that. And I would say, you know, on a personal level, it was so fantastic for you and I both to be working with Peter and his team a few weeks ago on sort of looking at the, the real depth of the systemic team coaching because his work is continuing to evolve even beyond what is commonly known as a seven I model of supervision very much. You know, that's evolving as he shared with us into the 10 I model, which we are now using and offering as supervisors. So to the immense change and, and pace of change that's happening within our profession, especially around team coaching, I think it's a, it's a really exciting time to be offering this and knowing, you know, what we'd like to share uh, with all of you who maybe are listening, Kathy and I are well connected in with sort of that leading edge, like really there's a leading edge of this work of, of the team coaching space. So supervision, anything else? EMCC, you know, I'm sure there might be people who are listening here who come from the EMCC frame and that's more your area because you're more directly tied in with EMCC than even I am. Uh, anything you wanna note about difference between ICF, EMCC, Kathy? Well, the MCC process, they actually, the supervisor has to write an, a note kind of on your growth and the overall the process of application for membership is much more reflective in nature and uh, self-reported as opposed to perhaps showing um, certificates and number of hours like that. So it's a very different approach to professional development and your practice. And what I would say, again, we're just in the pilot phase for ICF, but I think you're going to start seeing, at least as it relates to the new credential for team coaching, more of that um, normative, qualitative process. And at least I think it's fair to be able to share this, that, you know, supervisors will be required to provide a letter of reference for people applying for the new advanced team coaching certification, which will be coming out later this year. It will be more case-based and not just putting in a log. So I've, I've started saying in the last, you know, the last couple of years, especially as ICF has embarked on the team coaching competencies, which I've been very involved with for a few years now, like team coaches, group coaches, make sure you're logging your engagements. It's really important because a lot of coaches are like, oh, I just sort of like do it. Well, you're, you may need to be going back to reach back to sponsors um, to ask not only for validation, but you may be needing a letter saying, you know, what was the value add of the work that you did within that organization? So stay in contact, right? Relationships are key. Yeah. Yeah. So let's keep moving. Again, three functions of supervision. Uh, you know, Peter Hawkins likes to refer to these as the three legs of supervision, you know, restorative, 
how can this work really provide that pause and that opportunity to reflect, grow, and renew, right? Refill. I think there's mm -hmm. a refillative component. Um, the formative function as well as the normative function. So supervision is not just, you know, the pause. It's not just for the coach. It's for the relationship. It's for us really being able to unpack, especially as team coaches, unpack the complexities, look at things from different perspectives. Kathy has also talked about the important piece uh, in team coaching, at least, uh, with supervision around co-coaches. So how are you also incorporating that into the supervisory experience? Anything else you Absolutely. want to say on the three legs? I know our call is getting uh, close to time. So anything else you want to add here? Not at this point. I feel that if this supervision is still a new concept to you, really encourage you to reach out and have a call with us. Mm -hmm. And I think that we, really, we can understand from your context how supervision can add value to whatever else you're already investing in for your practice and your business. You know, Kathy's done a great job already sharing some of these tools within supervision. You know, I know you've shared how we at Potentials Realized really are bringing that systemic lens to our work, uh, continuing to bring that systemic lens. What I've been really re reflecting on in the last, probably the last year or so, is just how embedded systems work actually is in, in our programming here at Potentials Realized. We're not necessarily well known for it. But when I first started as a professional, I was heavily influenced by the work of Peter Senge in those early 1990s. It was all about systems. You know, I have a master's in environmental studies. So my whole body of work and professional work is, you know, how does the environment uh, move across not only the natural world, the built world, the human world, the organizational world. And so it's just interesting how we are really at a phase of like systemic coming back and being such an important component. Now, I know, Kathy, you've got a, a number of other areas here. Do you want to take us through some of these as well? Absolutely. So uh, Jennifer already mentioned um, the seven-eyed model from Peter Hawkins and his extension, which is the ten-eyed model. Uh, you also have the seven dialogues um, from David Clutterbuck, another guru in the field. Some of the more creative options might be sculpting or constellations, and really that is something that can be done online. Um, it takes... Uh, and it helps you get into the space and get perspective um, of where you are working with your client and the client system and the relationships with it. Embodiment, like feeling it, using all you know, your different senses. And then other creative expressions which may include tactile um, pieces, Legos, art, stories. So we want to give space to all of it and come and play if that's the right word. And I think, again, for those of you that have engaged with us at Potentials Realized, you'll know my affinity for card decks, my affinity for dice. We, we produce these, you know, and again, supervision really embraces that creative space, even using writing uh, and journaling as part of the process yep. as well. So it's very, unlike mentor coaching, which some of you might feel is like, I've got to show up for the calls, I've got to do the field work. In supervision, we hope that this is really like a creative font for you to explore who you are, how you're showing up, how your clients are showing up and what's possible. We'll be bringing out all of those experiential tools that um, our work has been grounded in since the early 1990s. All right. So evolving your process, talk us through a little bit on this, Kathy. Well, we wanna end this call with an opportunity. You know, we've explained what supervision is, what it is for us at Potentials Realize and how it differs from mentor coaching. And as Jennifer said, they're both valuable and they add different um, opportunities to grow you as a coach. But if we're thinking about where coaching is going, whether it's digital coaching, whether it's working with teams of teams, um, whether it's uh, working with emerging leaders or, or doing more of a, um, a ripple effect at the community level, Supervision is an investment in your practice as a coach because it allows you to look at the system that you're operating in and where are you, what's your stance in it? It helps you connect the different dots that you're noticing, whether they're big dots, like in the, it, you know, if you imagine the night sky, is it flashing or is it just a speck? 
And, and what do you want to do with that, that you're seeing it in, in the sky there? Like, what is it? Do you want to pay attention to it? Do you want to just notice it? Do you want to try to bring it together and connect the different dots? It gives you that opportunity to try things out that maybe you wouldn't do in a session. You haven't tried, you're not sure yet. Let's try out how it's going to land. So you work in a, in a supportive relationship with somebody who, who gets to know you as well and is doing their own work. I mean, as supervisors, you're also getting supervision. Um, so you're, you're, you're invested in this reflective process and then intervention when you're maybe something you're thinking about doing or you have done has not had the impact on the system that you'd like it to or that it needs to have. So I think those are really just important points to share there. And I'll add on another little metaphor. Kathy's talked about connecting the dots, but the other piece that's so critical in our work here at Potentials Realized is of course, putting the puzzle pieces together. So if you look back to effective group coaching from one to many, my first two books, you know, we are always about how do these pieces fit together? How do they fit together in the space of our clients, of groups, of teams, but also how do we fit together? And what are the different combinations that exist? So we hope that today's call has been informative, maybe provocative for some thinking, really, I have to do something else now? That's like another thing I have to do? This is really an investment for you and your clients. And we'd really like to invite you to reach out for a call with either Kathy or myself. Um, Kathy, do you want to share your Calendly link? I'll just share mine because I don't have the longer Team Coaching Essentials one in my head, but calendly.com forward slash Jen Britton. Uh, you can reach out to me and that's J-E-N-N-B-R-I-T-T-O-N. -T -T and Kathy, what's your direct Calendly link? I, I don't know it. <laughs> okay, well, you know, you can also head on over to groupcoachingessentials.ca, not groupcoachingessentials.com. That'll take us to our older website, but groupcoachingessentials.ca. Or you can also find this video at Effective Group Coach on YouTube. And of course, our Facebook page, which is Effective Group Coaching. So there's just one more thing I think, Jennifer, to add is that you mentioned about, you know, mentor coaching for people who are doing PCC, they can count it as part of the core competencies, supervision does count as resource development. Mm. And we don't know where, how that's going to change um, as the field begins to evolve, that begins to continue to evolve, but it is an investment and it does count towards professional development requirements. So we hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to either Kathy or I, set up a call, or you can always reach us directly at info at potentialsrealized.com. Again, that's info at potentialsrealized.com. It's been great to sit down with you today, Kathy. I'm excited. We're going to be doing more of these calls uh, around both what we offer through the Team Coaching Essentials Program. Uh, you know, you're probably well familiar with our other work, reconnecting workspaces. I think these are the areas where because of the complexity, because of the change that's happening in the, many of the organizational spaces we're in, so important that we can start to uh, create the pause and reflection space. All right, Kathy, any final words before we get going? Well, I was just going to give the Calendly link. So it's yeah, https it back, backslash calendly.com backslash potentials realized with hyphen in between the words and backslash team hyphen coaching hyphen essentials. That will help you connect with both Jennifer and I. Um, and we look forward to hosting a call with you, just a curiosity call. And what I'll say, Kathy, because some people might be like, team coaching essentials? I thought you just only did group coaching essentials. But actually, for the last two years, we've been offering a 14 CCE program called Team Coaching Essentials, six weeks. Maybe you're interested in joining us. Kathy leads that. And uh, so always fun, always impactful as people new yes. and experienced. I want to stress, it's not just for new coaches. Uh, experienced team coaches have joined us for that program because again, it provides a survey, a foundational range of what is happening in the profession right now. All right, Kathy, thanks for joining and leading us. Uh, Thank with you. you. Really enjoyed our call today. Thanks for those who are listening in. Be well, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.